tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. All about nutrition from your favorite dietitian. Everything you need to digest in your mind. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Making you healthier one bite at a time. With Tony. With Tony. With Tony. Welcome to the Tips with Tony podcast. I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. I'm super excited for you to hear from our very next guest. Today we have Caroline. She is a holistic health coach and she's going to teach us all about how to get sustainable results beyond macros and a training plan. So I'm super excited for that because as we know, those can be tools, but they are not the answer um, and can actually be like not really helpful for some can be helpful for others but not always so anyways with that said caroline welcome to the tips with tony podcast thank you i'm so excited to be here so excited to have you here so the first question i always ask is a three-part question i'd love for you to introduce yourself by sharing who you are what you do and most importantly why you do what you do my name is caroline ofenstein i am a coloradan i'm a mountain girl I love water. I'm an Aquarius. <laughs> uh, what do I do? I call myself a holistic health coach. But wait, time out. Oh, yeah. you, you love water and you live in Colorado. There's oh, not a know. lot of water there, right? No, there's not. I know. <laughs> I'm a conflicted soul. Yeah, that's rough. That's it rough. That's why time. I'm like, when I think of like living outside of New York, I think about it and then I'm like, no, absolutely no. Like, just no. Like, it goes like, it's a hard no. Even like Arizona, love Arizona. But like, I feel like I need to live in like Cali to be like right close mm. to Arizona so I can be by a beach or something. I know. It's one of those things that anytime I am by a river, because we do have beautiful rivers here yeah. and like Alpine lakes, it's just that much more special. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So, anyway, sorry to cut you off. So no, you're no. from Colorado. Yeah. You love water. You're an Aquarius. Yes. Amazing. Keep going. <laughs> I call myself a holistic health coach. And that is kind of a title that I have wound my way into. So my background is in nutrition coaching, uh, primarily using macros with my clients and personal training. I was heavy into CrossFit and CrossFit coaching for a while. Then I competed in bodybuilding, uh, became an IFBB bikini pro. And over the last two years or so, I've really transitioned to a more holistic approach, which I'm sure we'll get into. But to me, that means really taking care of the mind, the body and the soul all together mm -hmm. instead of, for example, just using your mind and trying to follow diet rules, <laughs> which I'm sure you're familiar with and your audience too, probably. Um, what was the third part of the question? Why you do what you do. I am so lucky that I have been in this space now for a little over six years and why I do what I do the way I do it now with this holistic approach is thanks, thanks to the amazing people I've worked with over the years, honestly, and they have really taught me why we need to go layers and layers deeper than just mm -hmm. eat this and train like this. Mm -hmm. And I realized, wow, there is this huge missing piece that so many people don't know about, aren't educated about, we don't talk about it, that is this holistic lens and really connecting all of these parts of you and your lifestyle. So I learned from the clients that I worked with and I was like, man, there's a way we can do this better. And that's kind of how I came up with how I do my one-on-one -on -one coaching now. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, you mentioned that you did um, competitions and you were like heavy into bodybuilding. So I'm curious for you personally, if you don't mind kind of going a little deeper into that, like, at what point is it, was there a point where you realized like you thought you were going to have like the certain like feeling or answer or closure or pride or something. And then it just kind of felt like flat. And is that why you decided to go more into like the layers that you were just talking about? I think so. I mean, the biggest, it was kind of this weird two sides of that coin as far as, I really enjoy external validation. Maybe we all do a little bit. I'm aware that that's an area of myself that needs some <laughs> healing work still. 
And with bodybuilding, because we value thinness so much in our society, I received a lot of acknowledgement for, for being super duper lean. <laughs> and I did, and I also did well in the competitive space. And I think I hit a wall in terms of how my body was responding. I didn't have a period. Um, I started actually gaining a little bit of weight, even though I was eating nothing and doing like two hours of cardio a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and I felt just, I felt terrible. You know, I would just randomly cry <laughs> sometimes and I was tired all the time. And I finally got to a point where I was like, you know, this isn't worth it. Like my body is really, really fighting against me. I also uh, have a history of disordered eating. And so after pushing so hard for so long without, you know, I probably could have taken better breaks and saved myself some of this, but mm -hmm. I, I like to go hard, <laughs> as they say. And so I finally just, yeah, got to that point where I'm like, everything is unhealthy. You know, I have abs. People will comment on my six pack and how shredded and quote unquote great I look, but I was very unhealthy, mm. which says a lot about our diet mm. culture, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's when I was like, you know, I, this was again, like a year and a half to two years ago. And I knew I wanted to take a really long break. And I was like, what, what would happen if I just didn't restrict my food in any way for a year? And that's the commitment I made to myself when I competed for the last time. And I was like, I'm going to go a full year, not restrict my food, focus on getting my period back because I still want to have kids someday mm -hmm. and see what happens. And the amount of growth, oh my God, that year of my life was probably the best year of my adult life. Like I grew so much as a person. I, I redefined so much of what I thought health and wellness and nutrition and fitness meant. Mm -hmm. And this was that whole kind of shift I was just talking about, about when I was like, this is the missing puzzle piece. This is the piece we don't talk about when you're really taking care of the internal and the external does eventually match that. Yeah. I mean, I think the fact that you, I, I mean, I feel like you just skipped over that whole year that you said was a great year. Like where was it? Like, tell us more about how that un unfolded, because I feel like before it was great, it probably sucked. Like, I feel like you probably had to like, <laughs> like, I feel like you skipped the part that it's like, I have to like change my whole identity and, you know, I'm not getting an external validation based off of how it looked. You probably gained weight and it didn't feel good. Um, like there was probably like a whole lot of messy in the middle before you got to this place of like, oh, thank God I let go of that part of it. <laughs> so, but, so true. I'd oh love for you to talk more about that because so many people are like, okay, no, I'm ready to, I'm done dieting. So maybe not in the extreme. So maybe who are listening, maybe, maybe two people listening probably have done it. Like that's not our, my, you know, most people listening to this, but maybe two, two people out of the hundred thousands of listeners probably did like a bodybuilding competition or in that way. But I know that 90% of the people listening have done some sort of extreme restriction or excessive exercise or like gotten wrapped up in their disordered eating or even an eating disorder where it literally made them sick and they had to stop. I talk, right. I wrote about it in my book. It happened to me and I'm a dietitian. Like, hello, we're just like so in, in wrapped in this, but, um, I know that for those who, you know, where we teach people, and I know you do as well, like when we're trying to get them to break up with this idea of extreme restriction and letting go of that and really just like learning how to find that balance, it's so uncomfortable for them that for some people, they're just not ready. It's like they know that actually choosing to work with someone like myself or yourself or a dietitian on my team or whoever, that they're actually going to have to say goodbye to that part of themselves that was like so wrapped up in who they were and their identity. So how did you begin to let go of those parts of you and really start to heal? Yeah, thank you so much for calling me out on that because you're right. I'm at that. I'm finally at that point where it's like, oh, that was in the past. And like, I'm so glad I went through that. But... Um, are you familiar with Stephanie Buttermore? Probably. Uh, it sounds familiar. I'll do okay. a, quick, a quick look as you keep talking. <laughs> yeah. She, she kind of went through this whole all in thing from like a super fit chick to being like no food rules. And my journey, you know, she's huge on YouTube if anyone's interested, but my journey was like a toned down version of hers. I felt like, because I did end up gaining probably 
like 15 pounds above where I am now, which now mm -hmm. I feel like at a very comfortable, healthy weight for myself. Mm -hmm. I have a regular cycle that was like priority number one for me. Right. Right. Um, but at one point I was like 15 pounds over what was comfortable for me. Part of what helped me, I mean, there were so many things. First off, I really tried to take it slow. Like I did not do her kind of quote unquote all in approach where you're just like, screw it, eat whatever I want all the time. Mm -hmm. Since I have such a knowledge of macros, I would still track here or there. I wasn't trying to be as strict or like trying to really hit specific numbers, but I would still be tracking my food on and off. Be like, okay, mm -hmm. what and how much am I eating? Starting to tune back into my hunger signals while I did that. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't letting the macros really dictate everything. I was also starting to relearn because we turn that off if we're mm -hmm. tracking for a long time. I had to figure out how to turn back on that volume of what is my body actually asking for? And then I started to just kind of, I kind of like the word like unfolding, just kind of peeling back a layer and then another layer and then another layer. Uh, I also worked with a naturopath during this time. So I was keeping an eye on my blood markers, like are my sex hormones recovering or not? Uh, what are like inflammation markers in my body? What are they doing? I had a lot of gut issues come on Yeah. when I started eating more and my stress was really high and I was still trying to train like a bikini pro, which is a lot of training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was another area that I focused on. You know, I... I asked myself like am I working out because I want to or because I feel like I have to otherwise I'm going to quote unquote lose my body or lose progress mm -hmm. and I started to slowly only work out on days I felt like I really want to this this is going to feel really good mm -hmm. versus oh my god I have to go to the gym or I really should work out or I should do that cardio mm -hmm. so I'm sorry to cut you off, yeah. but I have a thought that I think, you know, so we were talking before about, I think the fear with food, right. As you go to this period of restriction, extreme restriction, and then if you don't have anything to follow, you'll like eat everything, but our bodies, eventually we do balance ourselves back. And we know that, but you, uh, you talk a lot about like being in the gray and kind of what you just gave a great example of how we don't have to go, you know, you can go from extreme restriction to kind of restriction to not restricting, but like, you don't have to go to the, like, now all out sort of thing, which I think a lot of people are falling into that pattern. Right. Yeah. Um, but then you talked about exercise and I, I think like, just like I literally, we've worked with clients who are just like tired of eating vegetables or like so tired of grilled chicken because it's like all they had on their nutrition plan. Right. Like they like, couldn't eat there. it anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, it's like, you just can't, it's like, Oh my God, if I look at another chicken again, I'm going to vomit. Like, and then um, exercise. I've actually, we've had clients come into the program as well, where it's like, they were doing, these like high intensity or even just like you know long hours or like rigid training plan or whatever it is and it's almost like they like so you so when you said like you would only exercise if you wanted to like there's people out there right now that like literally don't want to because they felt like they were forced to for so many years right so can you speak to those people right now <laughs> like how did you get yourself yes. around to like moving when you probably had this like almost I don't know just like annoyed factor with it like an unhealthy relationship with it after so many years totally yeah and I this comes up for a lot of clients I work with too and they're like I am so unmotivated I do not want to work out and I'm like cool take a week off from the gym mm -hmm. there is nothing wrong with doing that if you are super fed up with your workouts I would say take at least a week off and then instead and still move daily do what does feel good mm -hmm. go for walks outside do like housework and vacuum everywhere and get your right, just don't, that way. don't sit a lot if you can help it right <laughs> go to like a dance class um, yeah and then after that week maybe something else speaks to you that's one thing at this during this time I also you know you mentioned like how you probably knew you were going to gain weight how did you kind of deal with that fear I did know that I definitely had that fear and I was like how can I face this head on like my body is going to change I cannot stay this lean as I am Mm -hmm. What can I do that's going to help me embrace that and appreciate my body anyway throughout the changes? And I started pole dancing. Fun. I, you know, they're like the third person really? who's recently <laughs> told me it's coming that they to you. do pole dancing. Am I supposed to do pole dancing? Oh my God. It is so fun. Well, first of all, like kudos to you. This guy's okay. I've been about to guys tell you something funny, but like, 
I'll never forget when one of my friends was getting married, she had her bachelorette party and she, instead of going to a male strip club, we went to a female strip club. And I was just in awe of the strength of the athletic abilities of this woman. Okay. These women were on fire. I was like, girl, I give you so much credit. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it's they're really athletes. hard. It's, they are legit athletes. <laughs> and I started it as more of like, I thought it would help me kind of get in touch with my feminine energy, like get a little sensual with myself. Yeah. And it, I just fell in love with it because it was so athletically challenging in a way that like, I've never, I've never been a dancer and <laughs> The athletics involved, the gymnastics, the body weight strength, the core strength, Mm -hmm. it just like blew my mind. And so I really got into it Um, and that did help a lot. So I think proactively thinking about these things that like, what do you personally think might be challenging for you if you want to take a break from dieting or restriction or a really intense workout program? What do you think is going to be the hardest parts and what's going to help you What's going to help your body feel safe throughout that? What's mm-hmm. going to help you feel like, hey, it's okay. This is different. But here's like, you know, I don't want to say like self-love practice because I feel like people roll their eyes at that. But to me, like that's what dance became. But it, it, it really became, is though. Self-love really is just doing something that like makes your heart happy or just like happy. taking, care, taking yeah. care of yourself and like on a consistent basis. I think people still don't really understand self-love because I still think they think it means like getting manis and petties or like then they're they're, like so obsessed with themselves that they forget everybody else like I don't know I don't think people really even understand what true self-love is I'm sorry, but I had to interrupt this podcast because if you're feeling a little bit under the weather or you feel like you have a cold coming on, you're going to want to listen up. I'm all about staying hydrated with fluids, resting your body and eating your veggies, but sometimes we need a little extra help. The Defender Supplement from Gut Personal provides powerful immune support with key nutrients that support the soldiers of the immune system to effectively defend the body against harmful invaders. This supplement is made up of a powerful blend of key nutrients and botanical extracts that support your immune system for optimal strength and function. It contains the best immune supportive ingredients bottled up in one capsule. To learn more, go to gutpersonal.com or click the link in the show notes. And don't forget to use Tips with Tony 10 at checkout to get 10% off your order. Yeah, I like how, how you said it, like anything that makes your heart happy. Mm-hmm. And that's what dance became for me. And so I, I really didn't like I, I definitely had uncomfortable days and weeks and kind of even months But I still kept going to dance and I still still kept doing those other little practices that made me feel good, that weren't Mm -hmm. related to being a certain size, right? Or Mm -hmm. eating certain foods. Mm -hmm. So being kind of proactive with that, I think was really helpful. And then another thing we were chatting a little bit uh, about offline is I did dive into my relationship and my own personal work with plant medicine that I have been exploring over the past several years kind of with more intention and that really helped add this extra element of kind of like inner work and reflection Mm -hmm. and slowing down which is Mm -hmm. something that I really needed (laughs) I'm sure I'm sure like just the idea of even like even just the idea of decreasing the intensity or the duration of a workout. So not even going to zero, that probably in itself was uncomfortable and scary for you. Just kind of knowing like, it's okay if you don't work out today, right? Mm -hmm. It's okay if you take a rest day. Um, I definitely want to circle back to the plant-based medicine because I think that's super cool. um, And I would love to talk about that. Um, But before we do, I think we just need to, I want to reiterate to the listeners. Last week we had people on who talked about like kind of this fear of weight gain and now it's coming here again. And I think it's super important to understand that you're not gain. How do I phrase this? It's important to understand that it's okay. It's more, it's okay to gain weight any time of the year, mm-hmm. anytime, whenever, because like there's so much more to life than just your physical health. Honestly, there's a lot more to it, and there's a lot of reasons why we might not be focused on our weight and all that, and it goes up naturally, especially as we age. But more so in these this, these circumstances, like what we talked about last week and what we're talking about today, like Caroline, for for you, for example, like you needed to gain weight to be healthier. Mm -hmm. Like, so that's where it's like, what do you, what are you afraid of? 
you should be afraid of not getting a period. You should be afraid of not being able to have kids in the future. You should be afraid of your whole body shutting down and like your gut issues coming arise and like so many things that happen from not being healthy, not taking yeah. care of your body in a way, in a balanced way, right? So it's like, I also think that that could help for anybody who's listening, like to like, go, there's no, there. What, there's no fear there there shouldn't like I understand the fear because of diet culture but like realistically right. <laughs> like there shouldn't be a fear yeah because you're actually doing something good for you right like a fear is like you are homeless and you have nowhere to live that's a fear that's a real fear right but like the fact that you might gain weight but it's because you're going to now be able to get a period and your body's going to be functioning more normally you're going to have more energy and your mood's going to be better like why are we fearing that? <laughs> well, this is where I think, like, that's such a good point. And this is where I think the internal work, you know, whether that's, there are so many practices you can do for whatever mindfulness work, you know, meditating, journaling, going for quiet walks, just sitting and looking out the window without having your phone buzzing at you, whatever that is, is so important because it allows us to ask ourselves that question. Like, right. what am I afraid of? Okay, I'm afraid that I won't be, acknowledged in the same way because my body is a different size. Wow, that's a powerful statement. Like, where does that come from? When was the first time I was acknowledged for my body being a certain size? And you can start to like dig back through your history, where some of your limiting beliefs came from, where some of your beliefs about food and your body came from, and slowly healing those or choosing mm -hmm. new beliefs mm -hmm. is what leads to you having that acceptance like we're talking right. about right now like how i got to the other side <laughs> the other side it's a very free sign very yes. freeing it feels sign. good it feels good it's, <laughs> it's so good that you forget of all the the shit that you had to go through to get there <laughs> it's like having a baby right isn't that what we right. oh say? my like, god that's such a great acknowledge <laughs> that's such a great analogy they forget so that they have another one so that we keep procreating as a human honestly <laughs> that is so such a good analogy i love that i love yeah. that um and that's when your kid's behaving <laughs> when they're not behaving you're like why did i go through that that was not worth it no amazing okay cool so okay so you mentioned um plant medicine uh tell me more because I know like whatever it's just tell me more tell me more about your experience with it and how it helped you yeah yeah slightly taboo but I think it's we're moving away from that hopefully integrating it more into society we'll see what happens in coming years but I think like maybe a lot of people I had some recreational experiences as a young 20 year old or whatever um and then in more recent years, you know, I had friends who were kind of like microdosing psilocybin or psychedelic mushrooms. And one of my friends offered me some and I was like, you know what? I've heard about this microdosing. I've heard it can help with anxiety and stress. And honestly, it also drew me to that because of the like connection with nature and the connection to the plant itself or plant teachers is a lot mm -hmm. of what people refer to these um, plant medicines. And I was like, I, I would love to try that. And it really did. It really did help a lot of the pressures I was facing at the time. That is something I do really like to still practice because of all those those reasons I mentioned, you know, coming into stillness more easily, um, a deep connection with nature, which I think has really helped. I think maybe people got from my intro, like I used to live a lot in my masculine energy and it's been a focus of mine to come back to my feminine and kind of balance that out a little bit more with a little more being and a little less doing. Mm -hmm. It's helped with that. Um, that connection of, with nature is a great reminder to slow down, appreciate the seasons, not always be trying to, again, do so much. So I've really enjoyed that. Um, and I've I've brought it into part being part of my wellness routine. I think it really is a part of my practice. And I was lucky enough to travel to Peru over the new year and got Amazing. to sit with ayahuasca, which was something I was manifesting all last year. And it finally came together. And that was incredible. I ended up getting COVID while I was there, which so did a lot of us. And we yeah. were all fine. It was okay. It wasn't that bad. Oh God. <laughs> Thankfully, yeah. I think, I mean, I think everyone in January, <laughs> I literally think that everyone, <laughs> it's a blanket statement, but like, I mean, I got, I don't know if it was COVID. I don't know what it was, but 
um, I, my parent, I, well, everyone I know had COVID or right. it was not well. Stomach virus. January that was going was a crazy around. Month, I think everyone was yeah. January was insane. And but yeah, like, I guess the travel. But. Yeah. Yeah. So that added definitely an extra challenge. It was a very challenging experience, but that's honestly another reason that I like working with these plant teachers is because I feel like they, they often take us to uncomfortable places, especially if we go into uh, a guided journey, for example. And I, I believe that we all kind of ask for different challenges throughout our life. And if we can meet all of those challenges as what can I learn from this? How did I ask for this? Why might I have asked for this so that it can serve me so that I can reach this new level of what I meant to achieve in this lifetime? That growth is is life changing. You know, it can mm-hmm. be so. Mm-hmm. So that's really become a part of my my overall like health and wellness practice over the years, too. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like it'll become more and more conventional. I don't know if that's mm-hmm. the right word someday, but not yeah. Not <laughs> but that's yet. cool. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that your yeah. experience with that. Um, so, OK, so I guess so let's end it with this, but um, we're not quite done yet, but I feel like this is going to be a good conversation um, basically like going, how would you teach your clients to go from this place of kind of like following, their, like tracking their macros or following a training plan or, you know, being super rigid to actually being able to trust their body um, and even like know how to use mindfulness and, you know, stuff like that. I'd love for you to elaborate on that. Yeah. I think that that's a really great next step to go to after we kind of talked about those rules and those extremes, when we really can feel they're not serving us anymore. How do we get back to that place that feels where I still feel healthy? I still feel active. I feel good in my body, but I don't feel that like crushing pressure or guilt Mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. And one, one place I like to start with is just some type of daily body check-in. So that could be, for example, one of my clients was recently just, she really wanted to work on critiquing her body. She felt like every time she looked in the mirror, she would do like an ab check or a body check or critique something and say that she wished something was different. So we started to just kind of break down that habit and be like, okay, that that does become kind of a habit, right? I definitely struggled with that. It's a habit for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you mentioned that. So how do you how do you start to change that? What I like to do is think about what are the cues, right? Like maybe it's when you need to use the bathroom and every time you go pee, that's kind of like a cue of, okay, I'm going to go look in the mirror or it's a certain time of day, right? There's usually something that kind of cues us to do that body check or to look in the mirror and critique ourselves. So the first practice I like to do is start to notice that cue and maybe for a week, you still do it. You still do the, you still do the critiquing, the checking, but you notice you at least are very aware that you're doing that and when it's happening. And then maybe week two, you start to replace that. So, okay, I'm in the bathroom. This is when I usually critique myself. How can I just look myself in the eye for, for 10 seconds instead and just try to clear my mind? Cause we might not jump from like, this this harsh criticism of ourselves to oh my god I just love myself and my body's perfect (laughs) yeah we're not gonna make that gigantic leap but you can make those small changes like maybe you put your hand over your heart and you just take a big deep breath instead and then you leave the bathroom so starting to make those really small changes to come back to a place where you're just feeling more gratitude and more safety in your body I Mm -hmm. think is a great place to start and if that seems like too much to someone even just at mealtimes or once a day in the morning, just asking, what does my body need today? Mm -hmm. And just taking a second to tune back in. Because those of us with any type of extreme background, like we talked about, you really do have to kind of shut down those cues from your body. So how do you start coming back to letting your body guide you and not weighing and measuring and tracking everything you eat for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. I think it can be as simple as starting with like, what's one thing my body needs today? Mm -hmm. maybe it's for a while when I was kind of in this transition rest 
came up for me almost every single sure. day. Yeah, because you were hard for on yourself for so long. You probably yep. needed a lot of recovery. So I would be like, okay, well, I still really want to work out today, but maybe I'm going to do a 45 minute workout instead of 60 minutes. And that's a little bit of extra rest. Maybe I can go to bed a little bit earlier. You know, your body might tell you like, carbs or maybe I need love today or you never know what might come up for you everyone Mm -hmm. is so different but taking that very very short moment to just ask yourself what does one what is one thing my body needs today seeing what comes up and then honoring that Mm -hmm. that is a great practice to just really start tuning back in yeah I love that speaking my language speaking my language it's amazing (laughs) amazing okay anything else you want to share with our listeners before we wrap up today maybe just, you know, if you're in that place, if you're in that place of a little bit of fear, we talked a little bit about kind of reframing that, but from someone who is on the other side, like just keep, keep going, keep going because we, it seems easier to throw in the towel and be like, no, I'm just going to do it because this was, this was easier. It was more comfortable. It was in my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. But if you can Mm -hmm. just keep going and push through those little bits of resistance again and again and again, you will get so far past like, I I cannot believe how far I got in less than two years because I just had this commitment to myself to, you know, not restrict food and tune back into my body for at least 12 months. And it, it literally changed my life. It changed how I coach. It changed my business. It changed my health. It changed everything. So if you're at that place, know that there's going to be resistance, try to prepare for it, build that support around you and do it. Fucking do it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly what Caroline just said. (laughs) It's scary, but it's so worth it. It's so Mm -hmm. worth it. And lean on, you know, someone that you trust, a nutrition coach, a a health coach, a dietitian, um, whoever you've been following for a while or whatever, maybe something that Caroline just said resonated with you, like reach out to the people who you resonate with and also who are credentialed and educated um, and know enough about the topic and, and also, you know, have been where you're trying to go, you know? So that's the other thing too, like, I don't, I think that there's knowledgeable people and then there's people who have been through it, their experience themselves. And when you have the combination of those two things, you are going to get a different kind of experience. Yeah working with that professional, you know, it's a, it's a game changer. So anyways, thank you so much for being here. How can people connect with you and follow up with you if they wanted to get in touch with you? Thanks again for having me. This was great. Yeah, my pleasure. And I can't wait to have you on my podcast. So that's a great yes. place for people to find me. My podcast is called Macros, Muscle and Manifestation. So all about kind of bringing the science and the spiritual of health and wellness together. And then I'm most active on Instagram, which we can link below probably. It's just my name at Caroline Ofenstein. And I do, the best way to work with me is one-on-one coaching. And I do have a couple spots opening up pretty soon. So definitely just shoot me a DM. If you have questions, follow-up questions, you just want to connect, I'm here amazing well thank you so much for being here guys make sure you give her a follow and if any of this resonated with you take a screenshot of it share it on your story tag me at tips underscore with underscore tony with an i and tag carolyn as well and if you're not subscribed to the tips of tony's podcast make sure you hit the subscribe button a new episode comes out every tuesday and thursday and when you're subscribed you don't miss a beat all right that's it for me today thank you so much for listening as always this is tony marinucci your registered dietitian helping you get healthy one bite at a time <laughs>